Good evening, citizens. My name is Ban Shattersong, former captain of the Bloody Hands Mercenary Company. And today I'd like to talk to you about the vile creature that is the Plague Wolf. I have some personal anecdotes to share, but first allow me to regale you with common imperial knowledge of these vile beasts that dwell within Varushka. A Plague Wolf is a supernatural predator found in certain parts, at least, of Varushka. They are greatly feared and their appearance is a cause for great alarm in Varushkan settlements. Technically, they are wolves, uh, the Varushkan word for a, a low threat, and I mean this in a relative term, a low threat monster. But, as with the Mora, another type of wolf we'll uh, perhaps touch on another time, they are practically occupying a middle ground between a wolf and a sovereign. They are intelligent and seem in some ways to feast on the death of living creatures. While their subject husks, and we'll talk about that more in a moment, devour the meat of the dead, the plague wolf itself is said to sustain itself on the last breath of a dying creature. While they can feed on the terrified deaths of animals, they much prefer to drink the lithe breath of humans and orcs, a more delicate flavour. They do not need to physically suck the breath from a victim, but sometimes they can be seen doing so. But rather, they seem to be able to suck the essence out of the air itself. Plague wolves are doubly dangerous because they are never encountered alone. As I mentioned previously, this is the husks, the flesh-hungry husks that these plague wolves are always surrounded by. The plague wolves use their sickening powers to create servants and soldiers. There are some unreliable stories suggesting that similar creatures might exist in other parts of the world. There are tales from the deserts of Zira, of a similar sounding creature whose breath desiccates living flesh. They are said to feast on the fluids of the body in the same way that a plague wolf feasts upon the breath. There are also stories from the distant Sumar Republic of jaguar-like beasts that eat the skin of the living. It is not clear whether these creatures, if they even exist, are related to the plague wolf, or as is more likely, are entirely different supernatural predators and unrelated in any way. These hulking beasts are furred humanoids with the features of predatory animals. Some might describe them wolf-like. Most commonly they have muzzles and similar wolf-like features, tall ears, sharp fangs, although there can be versions with a rat or bear-like detail. As intelligent predators, they sometimes use weapons, armour, or other tools. And there is at least one story of a plague wolf that wielded an enchanted scythe, which it used to cut down its opponents before devouring their life. Plague wolves are larger than humans, eight, perhaps nine foot tall sometimes, and they are a potent, immortal threat. In combat. They will never be encountered alone, and being surrounded by a pack of shambling, flesh-hungry husks, they use this controlled bodyguard to escort them and protect them in battle. And as noble imperials or barbarian orcs die, the plague wolf creates more husks through the use of its horrible, pestilent breath. A living being caught in the exhalations of a plague wolf is envenomed and the flame of their life is snuffed out by any serious illness. Worse still, shortly after their death, the victim rises up as an abominable horror that preys on the living, sometimes howling and hunting in packs of other flesh-hungry husks. 
Some scholars suggest that the effects of virus lunare, a potent poison, are modelled on or somehow derived from the effect of the plague wolf breath. These creatures are said to be able to use their baleful spittle to create subject husks from the freshly dead bodies that they slay. Sometimes these bodies, these bodies have been buried for days and this effect still takes place. However, it is seen as more time consuming and perhaps should a plague wolf be spotted doing this, they could be desperate or vulnerable. Further still, no husk, and even one created from a ritual, such as quickening cold meat, will attack a plague wolf. They are inherently unable to hurt what some might describe as a primogenitor. They seem to have the ability to exert dominance over many such creatures, and give them the less common sobriquet of wolf kings. In addition to their venomous exhalations, the plague wolf is known to possess great reserves of healing energy, which it sometimes shares with its husk minions. When physically challenged, it can strike mighty blows with its claws that rend limbs and send opponents sprawling. I... No, I'll talk about it later. Not just yet. But it must be said that I have seen such monsters in combat. To describe the opponent as sprawling is perhaps sugar-coated. What these creatures can do to a citizen is barbaric, monstrous, and some of the most violent eviscerations I've ever seen on a battlefield. Anything short of a fully plated Dornish knight or a high guard cataphract will be torn asunder in moments. Furthermore, any area where a plague wolf has laired for an extended period of time tends to acquire an aura of sickness, lethargy and a creeping despair. This makes facing the creatures in their dens doubly difficult. In rare cases, their dens have also been found to be regios. And at this point, the aura becomes even more powerful. However, there are some weaknesses to a plague wolf. They cannot abide the touch of fresh, pure water. Running water, especially, such as that found in rivers and large streams. The fresher and purer the water, and the faster it flows, the more they hate it. This expresses itself most clearly in a reluctance to cross or approach large bodies of water, such as lakes or rivers, and attempts to drive a plague wolf off with buckets of water have, unfortunately, proved unsuccessful. Conversely, they are often attracted to areas of polluted or poisoned water, especially if stagnant. There is a story of a plague wolf that entered the sewers under Temeshwar in the year of 218, and wreaked havoc there until the combined force of Temeshwari Bravos and Varushkan Wardens tracked the creature to its lair and destroyed it. It is important to note that the husks created by a plague wolf are not impeded by water in any way, and with such a malign intelligence behind the plague wolf, you can be assured that those husks will fill in for the weaknesses that such a creature may have. You might think with such an intelligent creature there may be more to them, perhaps some kind of primitive society, perhaps even a language. But, as far as we have observed, these supernatural predators have no culture or customs as such. Whilst they can speak, it is rare that they ever meet up with others of their kind, and they are entirely solitary. When spoken to by let's say, a variety of sources, whether imperial heroes or travellers from afar, they have used their native tongues in response to any questions. There are dark tales of individuals who have made pacts with plague wolves. 
One story tells of a bandit who worked with a plague wolf to lure travellers into ambushes. Once the creature had feasted, the bandit would loot the corpse. Another story tells of a bale who helped a plague wolf attack and devour the life of residents from nearby villages in return for safety from the beast's own rampages. In almost all such stories, the human who deals with a plague wolf comes to a horrible end. Either at the hands of the people it had betrayed, or the jaws of the monster itself. It must be known that they are incapable of gratitude. Some histories mention plague wolves as having fought alongside the armies of Alderi the Fair, and the Velodni are known to bargain with these hideous creatures. All plague wolves are said to share a common ancestor, however, a sovereign usually referred to as the Howling Queen. She is believed to slumber beneath the razors in northeastern Miakrova. There is one final note here in this record, and that is upon the elder plague wolves. Now, if one can call a plague wolf regular, a regular plague wolf occupies a space between wolf and sovereign. Depending on their personal strengths, they might fall to one side or the other. But with an elder plague wolf, you can be assured that this threshold has been well and truly crossed. There have been very few encounters with elder plague wolves, and these creatures are significantly more potent than the average beast. These horrors are said to possess additional supernatural powers, each unique and terrible. There are only three encounters in these stories of Varushka, and they are told and retold with significant variations. The first is that an elder plague wolf bedeviled the people of Alodni in the first century before the formation of the empire. Rather than exhaling pestilential breath, the venom of this creature seeped from its skin, automatically poisoning every living creature that came near it. Furthermore, it created husks not only from humans and orcs, but from animals. Indeed, it was so potent that until it was defeated by a band of wardens, it decimated the fur trade in that entire part of Miakrova. Secondly, an elder plague wolf once assaulted all travellers moving north from Delev. The presence of this horror poisoned plants as well as animals, and anyone who ate such a plant that the creature had breathed on was affected by its horrible venom. It was burnt to death by a joint effort of Schlachter and Temeshwari Bravos. Thirdly, and at the height of the fighting against Alderi the Fair, a pitched battle took place near Triov in Voldomarts. A single elder plague wolf, with two subservient plague wolves, was said to be able to call up a stinking grey-green mist that washed across the forces opposing them in a tide of venom and pestilence. It spread, allegedly, for over half a mile. The two lesser plague wolves were slain by forces supported by Navari Vates, but the elder was never accounted for. The tally of imperial lives that they took was severe. Finally, an elder plague wolf assaulted veils across Dupladari and Srojkoja until it was apparently defeated by a lone warden named Misha Goshinov Seneriv. Misha used a powerful amulet that protected the warden from the creature's venomous breath. The story suggests that not only did the breath bring a deadly venom with it, but also that of the husks it created, leading to a veritable plague of shambling horrors across southern Miakrova. So there you have it. Plague wolves, elder plague wolves, 
and a Navari's vain attempt to pronounce the place names of vales and villages in Varushka. I did say at the start that I would like to regale you with perhaps some of my personal experiences. And coming from a dead man, they are perhaps not lessons, but warnings. Many moons ago, I was unfortunate enough to head out on a skirmish from the gates of Anvil. This was a combined effort of Navari scouts and Dornish knights, supported by a few healers from the Brass Coast. Our mission was to approach this lair, this rocky outcrop that, well, at least according to scouting reports, had a large number of husks located around them. Fearing some kind of necromancer, and uh, in the, you could say, backlash from the fever water undead army a few years ago, we were sent in to clear it out. Upon arrival, sure enough, in the fey moonlight, there stood a crowd of shambling husks, and the Dornish knights naturally set upon them with glee and perhaps reckless abandon. Whilst the Navarre and the Brass Coast manoeuvred into position, there was a deafening, shrieking howl. From the darkness at the end of this field, a dark creature emerged. From the rocky outcrop, this black, furred, wolf-like humanoid arose. Its eyes glowed a bright blood red in the blackness that surrounded it. The only way you could tell it was there was from these glowing eyes and from the sheen of moonlight skittering across its sharpened claws. It broke down into a low crouch and began a limping but unbelievably quick charge towards the Dornish knights. Within moments, half had fled, and the other half were fighting for their lives. In a few moments more, six, seven, eight Dornish knights had been torn asunder by this creature, their flesh ripping like simple parchment. The rest of the Dornish knights managed to gather themselves, and with the Navarre, myself amongst them, and the Brass Coast Kohan, we charged in, hoping that our superior numbers would prevail. But even with 30 of us, the creature still took a fearsome toll, howling and shrieking as it ripped apart more and more bodies. The husks themselves were no forlorn husks, slow or sluggish. No, these fought like wolves themselves, attacking the weaker members of the group and pulling them out of reach of our healers or indeed anybody else who could help them. The fight felt like it lasted for hours, but I'm sure it was moments. And after those moments were complete, we fled and scattered from the field, leaving the broken bodies of Imperial heroes behind. Surely to become husks. I have never been so afraid in my life to see such a creature, to face it in combat, and worse still to run with its piercing howls echoing into the darkness behind you, unsure whether it's chasing or whether it's simply stopping to feast upon your friends. So should you ever encounter one, or worse still, actively hunt them, Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for the worst and hope for the best. <laughs>